Oh. Well, I'm out of here then. It's official. Run away. Well, if I'd known it was that easy, I would have started recording 10 minutes earlier, dude. Um, well, I wasn't Gentlemen here. and ladies, <laughs> uh, good morning or good afternoon, wherever you are. Thanks for jumping in and joining us today. Uh, anybody who wasn't there at the very top, I would say uh, we were, we've seen recently a lot of um, spoofing attacks, perhaps, but uh, attacks appearing to come from the Kremlin. So if you need a fun sales tool, mm -hmm. uh, go run the uh, the SAS risk report and take a look at what's happening from Moscow. It's uh, We've had some partners making hay with that. It's uh, it's It looks very threatening, even if it is a bunch of Ukrainians. <laughs> uh, thanks for jumping in here today, all. Uh, anything top of mind? Uh, anything that anybody wants to jump into as far as any new respond rules or anything that uh, you guys need help uh, configuring? I don't need help. Ben might need help, but he's mm, in charge. So I'm, I'm, I'm good. Constantly need help. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, our developers have promised us a button that says uh, get more time back for Ben, um, but that button is still in uh, in development. So we Is that like that. Staples, an easy button? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ben, ben is the well, easy button like for the rest filters. of us. <laughs> power filters. Any second now, buddy. Any <laughs> second now. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I, I thank you for uh, uh, jumping in with all those great questions, guys, and uh, we'll see you next week. <laughs> Yay! Okay, bye. What is going ben on gets with a two-hour lunch. <laughs> yeah. um, as of today, guys, we've uh, uh, you know about some of the larger effort. You may or may not know about some of the larger efforts about uh, standing up the European Data Center and some of the other uh, things that are finally coming to fruition have freed up um, some of my development hours. And there's a backlog of uh, little bug fixes and things coming. I think we've got a total of 54 different polishes coming this uh, quarter. And I saw, oh, well, very good. <laughs> I do appreciate the uh, the input, Mr. McIntosh. Um and uh, yeah, if you have questions, do shout them out. We're pretty uh, uh, we're pretty to. informal here, and we sort of wander about all the time, anyways. Um, but just today, eleven new um, alerts landed on the platform, so we were hovering just over three hundred, and I think we're almost three twenty today. So uh, check out what my uh, dev guys have been up to, and uh, look for more to come again there's a whole bunch more coming this uh this quarter and into next that was sort of lagging in the background until we got some of the bigger projects out of the way there's a uh, bunch of release it, new stuff released today too but it just hasn't made its way to the knowledge base yet yeah now yeah. um ben do you know of anything we can tease there that chase people in and go dig into the knowledge base because i don't oh yeah <laughs> if you're doing the psa integration you should have the respond rule um uh, is it they put the details in there now or something? Is that in there now? Uh, actual rule trigger events to PSA tickets when generated via respond uh, rules. Right, so, right, right. Um, and for context, one. anyone who lives in their PSA and not so much in the platform, um, when a respond rule triggers, it wasn't abundantly clear what was the alert that triggered or alerts that triggered that respond rule. Now that's going to be embedded in the ticket. So your tier one engineer that may not even have access to SAS alerts has an understanding of what started this whole um, avalanche of action. So we, that's yeah. been a big ask from a lot of partners. Unfortunately, it's not an email yet. So manage still has to do a little bit of manual work, but um, I've been promised soon. So that Any when the ticket now, yeah, when the tickets that we I generate for managed, uh, we'll actually have like really good information because uh that would be nice. <laughs> Excellent. Enrique, I saw your hand go up. Man, you need to get quicker to me, Anthony. I don't know. I'm going to forget what it was. Um, <laughs> and I'm not kidding. Uh, shit. We were talking about new stuff on the platform. and uh... Oh, Microsoft IPs. Um, we're good. We keep on getting, I don't know what's going on with Microsoft. One of my employees from one of my companies, I got on a, a, a managed SaaS mm -hmm. ticket yesterday stating they accessed the file from the UK or something like that, a 52 IP address, which belongs to Microsoft uh, data center. So I'm thinking it's SharePoint OneDrive IP address, mm -hmm. but not sure why. How can we clean that up? Because we are getting questioned, not much, it's not happening a lot, but we are getting questioned by customers why 
uh, like, well, obviously they panic immediately. I know there might be a little mm -hmm. discrepancy there, but they panic immediately. And why are they opening from the UK? And I'm like, well, I don't know. <laughs> Let me do a little research and see. And I'm noticing most of these, I'm not going to say mislabeled countries because I don't know what the correct country label is for that IP, but they're Microsoft IPs. Let's, and Ben, keep me honest here. What we've seen, Enrique, is that in the last year or so, Microsoft has decided that one day they're going to store your spreadsheets in Japan. And the next day they're going to be in the Netherlands. And the day after that, they're in Dubai. The day after that, they're in Brazil. Microsoft is moving your data all over the planet. So the way Microsoft presents that data in the alert is telling us where the file is located, not where the end user is located. Now for IAM, balance. yeah, it, that's that's what it is. It, they used mm -hmm. to occasionally do that for presentation when bandwidth was weak. If you were, you know, on a sales sweep in Europe, they'd move your data over there so that when you open that spreadsheet, it opened right up. Now, with latency being as low as it is on the globe, it wow. doesn't. You haven't, you know, you clicked on your spreadsheet, you went to work, man. You had no idea that it was stored in Ireland, and you probably don't care, or. Well, I'm well not depends on so. depends on exactly depends on what it is. But is there any way for you guys that you're you you don't because I can't do crap. Well, unless I have a certain contract with Microsoft that states it has to be in the states. Yeah. Is there anything you guys could do to? I, I mean, what's the benefit? I think there needs to be some tweaking or filtering on the alerts, not to alert on where Microsoft mm -hmm. stores my zero ones. Uh, Enrique, you are 100% correct, my friend, and that is something called power filters that our dev guys are working on, and it'll be here soon. <laughs> okay, perfect. Yeah. Yep. And In the, the meantime, I just soon. usually suppress those things. I, yeah. I put them on the suppression thing for like 100 days, and I'm hoping by then it'll be well out. I, like I don't. I'm hoping it'll be out this quarter. I am am cautiously optimistic, but then I'm a glass half full kind of guy. So if it if it doesn't happen this Bang. quarter, it will happen early uh, early next quarter. In the meantime, anybody who is feeling like this is a lot of noise, take a look at our YouTube channel. Ben has a great little video how to walk through with the pros and the cons of this, how to quiet that down on a temporary basis until my dev team brings on power filters. Power filters will allow you to Enrique imagine this. If it's a file touch event in a known Microsoft data center and it's outside of an expected location, just for file events, then knock that down to low. Of course, IAM events, somebody typing in a password or using a token outside of an approved location, very different criteria, very different security concern, very different alert. Okay. But like this one, man, and that's going to be awesome, Anthony. Like on this one, Ben, you said you just suppress. Uh, mm -hmm. Does that mean you're suppressing for us manageable dudes or we have to come back and tell you? Are you guys no, doing no, this? We do it. Okay. We don't automatically do it because it doesn't affect everybody, but. And they're uh, minimal. They're, they're, they're do. not that many. They're like 200 an hour kind yeah. of. I'm more looking towards <laughs> authentication um, events and stuff like that. And there, there's other things we're doing. We're trying to do in the background to replace those IPs with useful ones. <laughs> Uh, but I think that's mostly uh, revolving around Unify currently. But yep. Well, thank you, Lo uh, Logan, uh, through that uh, shortcut into the chat. Um, if you have five Where or six minutes, uh, you can watch that. Thank you, Logan, again. Um, and uh, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. There, there's a couple of you know concerns there about mm -hmm. things being missed, but they're fairly minor, especially if you're homogenous and only in the Microsoft ecosystem. Yeah, you can either do that or suppress them. Either one. I'll do both. Uh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah <laughs> about. you can go through and bang, 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 and that's I don't know which is the better, um, quite frankly, uh, because some of our larger partners the, risks. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, excellent. True. So great, great question, Enrique. Um, and I'm surprised yet it hasn't bitten you in the backside. A lot of my partners, I've had some partners mm. stand up brand new clients, born in the cloud, and everything's in Japan for period. I had a guy who did two brand new companies in a row. And everything was stored in Japan, kept in Japan. They are, you know, everything they absolutely did. It's all coming out mm -hmm. of the Japanese data centers. So I don't know what Microsoft is up to. What are they want. Want. But are they allowed yeah. to do that? I mean, there's a lot of agreements. If you have clients that are medical, right. they had to keep their stuff HIPAA compliance. Like, we're, we're, 
I, I, and I have, well, I have clients on, on, on both and I haven't really noticed, I haven't looked in it deep enough, but I, I just wonder, you know, yeah. Eric, you looked. are very correct on that. We have, um, uh, we have some partners in Australia that had some, um, nation state sort of data that was absolutely not allowed to be any place except on Australian soil. And we yeah. were able to prove that it was being stored in Singapore and Japan and elsewhere. And they had to go have some very frank conversations with, uh, with their government agencies and take that back to Microsoft. So that was a whole conversation nobody wants to get involved in, but we're watching the watchers. We're absolutely doing that. And that's one of the things that I like about our platform is we're bubbling up things that are just being done in the background and if you catch that now, you've got some evidence to take back. And I saw you typing in there, Tina, on, let's see, what's, uh, Tina's uh, one of our newer friends up north, um, probably already shoveling snow. I'm kidding. Pretty close. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, Tina, yeah, the power filters, uh, I suspect, will give you the, uh, the clarity and the granular control of that. Um, it's just tough right now. Yeah, and we're not the only ones going through it too. I've I've seen other vendors talking about the same thing. It's just I don't know who who the bright idea was to switch over that IP address and the and the event data, but it was just that's it was one of the stupidest things they've done. <laughs> I don't know. Absolutely. Well, why do I need to know where the IP address is that's accessing it? I want to show them where our data center is. <laughs> like, Micro and I could see if I was managing traffic inside of Microsoft, what's more important to me? My own internal data, then you know, helping out the clients that are paying the paychecks. I can see that. True. Oh, Tina, I'm so don't don't even remind me. I glad, remind glad I left the North Country. Oh, um, snow, snow. You don't want snow. I do. Kill some of the oh, ticks and bugs that are around here. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Wash your mouth out, Ben. <laughs> um, my Cuban butt cannot deal with snow too. <laughs> <laughs> Eric. You moved way too far north for somebody who doesn't like snow. I, yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. Yeah, he's reminded every winter. In any case, um, <laughs> uh, Ben, you were talking about the IPs. Are you talking about those 10 dots that we see all the time? Mm. No. Just because I, I've noticed this lately, Ben, and, and anybody else can jump in here. When I'm looking at... Um, uh, uh, the 10.10.10 or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Enrique, have you seen those? No, but you triggered something back here that I emailed Ben directly yesterday. We're mm -hmm. also seeing uh, set managed SaaS tickets uh, that say something was accessed from a bad known IP, but mm -hmm. you don't tell us the bad known IP. <laughs> yeah, that's what the uh, that's what I've been telling Adam about a uh, developer just to put. Um, the respond information into the initial like trigger, like what triggered it, uh, because we don't get that information. And so our guys have to go in and they, they basically are doing that research and commenting on the ticket and you should get the comment. But yeah, we don't, we don't initially get it either. <laughs> so. Yeah. Cause it'd be helpful to like, what mm -hmm. would I do in that case? If I have the IP, I'll go into SIP, research the IP mm -hmm. just as an extra set of eyes. So I know you yeah. guys are doing your homework, but we'll do it as well. Yeah. Or sometimes I'm almost sure that customer, that's their VPN. So then yeah. we might come back and tell you, hey, FYI, like the list you asked me yesterday, this is their VPN. So mm -hmm. it's a good, bad known IP address or whatever oh, yeah. we want to call yeah, it. We, I started asking for that probably a couple of weeks ago. So Adam knows it's on my list of things. I have like a list of 15 things that managed once. They call it my Christmas list and it's it's been growing. <laughs> Don't forget my recommendation from last night. Oh, yeah. True. And um, anybody who's new to the ecosystem, the, we take that stuff very seriously. You know, we kind of joke about it here, but we love the feedback from you guys. It really does tell our developers, you know, what the canary in the coal mine is telling us. Where do we need to put our efforts? Because you guys are going to see it. You're the boots on the ground. You're going to see it first. So uh, mm -hmm. keep that feedback coming. I, and like so many of these things, some of these things are going to get delivered on Tuesday. Some of these are things are going to get delivered in Q5 2025. So it's, <laughs> you know, where we keep working at that. He just said, tell um, us what Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. This is It'd very on true. A yeah. On a Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. uh. um, 
So Ben, uh, actually Logan, if you remember to uh, talk about this on our on Monday Dev meeting, remind me about those ten dot. Um, we're seeing no enriched data around those. And Tina, what we what we're pretty sure those are is when you're syncing Microsoft uh, SharePoint OneDrive type things, Microsoft actually stands up a unique VPN for every single file and then tears it down when the file synchronizes, which is horribly complicated and horribly secure. And I like it, but I'm curious why my platform, and I don't know the answer, why my platform isn't enriching that data like we do every other IP that we have in there. So I don't know if it's an IP data.co uh, Logan or something else we need to dig it's into. It's a Microsoft thing. Um, other people have started seeing it in, in Azure logs or intra logs. They changed okay. something. There's an article about it on Microsoft support. Nothing to do with us. Are people seeing the same thing? Uh, ben, if you'd be so kind as to toss me that uh, internally when we're done here, I'd appreciate it. Oh, show. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> that's st that started to come up and I need to be able to answer that so I don't look like an idiot yeah. or less like an idiot. Um, well, I mean, Microsoft's not weighing in on it. They just don't, they don't, they don't care to answer, but uh, other people are seeing it and, and they screenshotted things from the audit logs. Yeah, very good. Thanks for that, Ben. Oh, sure. Yep, yep, yep. Um, thanks for anybody that's joined the last couple of minutes. Any questions about the platform, some of the new stuff that's coming? Uh, anybody have anything interesting they've been doing with the platform they want to share? Anthony, hi. Ben, hi. Hello. Hi, Mario. Mario. I have a question. Uh, ben, I know we set up the, uh, I download the, uh, the mobile app uh, for my phone so I can get the alerts. Oh. I've been testing it out, and I, I see that the, uh, the the alerts are there, but I'm not getting any notifications. Is it a problem of the app or the setup? Should I be getting any notification whatsoever? Uh, uh, there, If it's respond rules, there's a, a part under – let me show you. Um, I'll show you. Did they fix the might... push issue that it had? I thought they did. Did they um, – I don't I know. Think... It has not. Let me go back in. Because if you go under un, under the respond rule and under alert notification, there should be a way to check it and, and add a person here. Oh. It should send you a push notification. But if it's not, let me know. Um, Sport ticket. Or, or let know. Anthony okay, know. Yeah, cause... So, so I have to set this up for every, um, every notification that I want to come to my phone. Is that correct? I think so, yeah. because otherwise we okay. blow you up with with uh, global. Gotcha. Data. Yeah. Okay. It makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna check it out. All right, um, Mr. McIntosh, thanks for weighing in there. Um, on you're not getting the push notifications as well. Um, we'll let our development team know there's something. Oh, cool. Yeah. We'll let Adam know. Is there yeah, any absolutely. way you guys on management could turn those on for all of them? You're making yeah. me lazy. No, no, that's totally cool. I don't... If if you want, um, just um, shoot us an, an, a ticket over at the MSA support, and and we'll we'll put that on. Not a big deal. Yeah. Fantastic. And uh, Mr. McIntosh, I would say, do me a favor. Uh, email support at SAS Alerts uh, with your concerns. So I've got some tracking on that. And anybody else who is using the mobile app and not getting the push notifications as anticipated out of respond rules. Uh, let us know. Again, uh, the more squeaky wheels on this, the more dev hours will jump on that. And well, you know, I'll push from my side as well. But um, um, our support guys need to hear from you as well. And um, anytime you open up a support ticket, guys, if you remember to CC your account manager, that also helps us um, know where we're struggling. And so if an account manager hears the same problem from three different clients, um, he or she will go light a fire under somebody. Um, Mr. McIntosh was asking about if he's building rules, is there a place other than Discord to discuss these? Um, Discord is a fantastic clearinghouse, and I think it's going to be your best bet. But anybody who hasn't checked out Ben's uh, growing list of things on our YouTube channel, um, be sure and check that out. There's there's some good content up there. Um, if you have new users or you know are looking for a different way to present this to a client about the possibilities of the platform mm -hmm. uh check some of those out and a lot of them are those are uh, are very digestible little four or five minute videos and uh, there's some good stuff on there but yeah i'd say mr mcintosh um definitely going to be the uh, discord is going to be the best place to um, have these very public discussions um david is asking about uh 
co-pilot activity and attendant tenant. Um, I think we did. We talk a little bit about that on the uh, last sassy call, Ben or Logan. I think there was some um, talk about that from Adam, but it's not in. It, it isn't fleshed out quite yet. Um, not specific to copilot. I know because um, Andy was asking about copilot quite uh, um, quite uh, uh, persistently. Um, it's a it's a high point of concern for one of our other partners named Andy, mm -hmm. and I know we're getting some telemetry from Microsoft on that, but I don't know what we're getting and where that's going to land in some future developments, I think is where you're going to see that today. I don't have an answer for you, um, David. So. Excellent. <laughs> Hungry for information. Well, Mr. McIntosh, you come to the right place for a lot of uh, information you might need to shovel, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, there's a lot of good stuff in there. That is one thing that um, a lot of our engineers kind of geek out about is there's a ton of great data getting coming out of Microsoft and everything else. It's just filtering through it. Um, anybody who didn't have a chance to join us on the SASE call last Thursday, uh, Amanda and the crew over there kind of telegraphed some of the things that are coming in respond about other applications. So um, look for um, AWS CloudTrail and Okta and Duo and a few of those others to start to land in um, Respond <clears throat> uh, this month as well. Right. So, would Jump Cloud be going on? Uh, Jump Cloud is uh, still in the pipe. And um, Eric, email, uh, I believe it's Maya, is your account manager, and ask about that. Um, and um, we'll get an answer as, as far as uh, what we found so far, or how far down the pipe it, that is. Um, but yes, keep pushing us, please. What about AWS? Do you guys get any? I've been I've been away for a while. Sorry. Uh, welcome Sorry. back, Eric. We missed you. Um, yes. uh, you CloudTrail is in beta. Uh, email Maya, and we can get you, uh, or just uh, email support at and ask for uh, uh, email Maya. Email Maya and. Uh, uh, and she can uh, get you the uh, beta on CloudTrail. Thank you. Yeah. And Ben's showing us behind the scenes here a few of the things that are in the pipe. I just wanted to see if, if we have that on our system. I don't think we have that on our on our tenant. Um, Mike, uh, do me a favor. Uh, go to settings, please. Mm -hmm. Sorry, ben, ben, go to settings for me, please. Mm -hmm. And uh, customize alert severity. And from the available apps pull down. Take a look and see what's uh see ignites in there, cloud trail. Um, cloud trail. Yeah, so this is the basics. What we're getting is syslog data out of uh, these guys. Oh, and there's there's a larger list. Yeah, that's lovely. Um, those little icons are so pretty. We didn't used to have those. Mm -hmm. um, ignite. Uh, there's there are some other alert additional alerts coming uh, here, and so uh, look for ignite to have more than just those three. The same thing with Okta. And Duo and the rest of those. Oh, this is Ignite. Yeah, no, Ignite's fleshing out oh, nicely. Ignite. They've they've got a uh, Mike's got a he's done a man's job there, really digging into that. So anybody mm -hmm. um, if you've got any of those uh, AEC stack folks using that, um, jump in on that. No, oh, solid questions. Good to have you back, Eric. Um, <clears throat> Ben, was there anything else you were going to show us here that I had uh, talked over while you were mousing around? Yeah, people wanted to ask about the API. Talk about talk to us about the API, Ben. Where would I find <laughs> the base information about our API, Ben? Well, I like to go under help, and instead of typing API, which you would think would take you there, I type in a webhook, and I wait for it to do its little magical bot <laughs> thing, and it's the webhook API documentation, and I blow this up. And this is where you can uh, investigate the web hooks. So there's a couple of different ways, I believe, that you can get our data. You can query it through the API and pull it that way for specific things you're looking for. Um, you can also set up a web hook, which I believe basically pipes the data to you um, if you set that up properly, which can be a little confusing. There's not a ton of documentation. Uh, at least I don't think it's extremely clear. Uh, because support really doesn't do too much with the API. Um, uh, they will help you a little bit, but they don't get too in involved in it. The most important uh, document or website you want to head off to is the Swagger Hub one. 
this does a pretty great job of explaining the different capabilities of our API. Uh, so you can oh, go back. You can scroll down here to the very bottom right, and this will describe the things you have to do for the webhooks. And then you have your a um, little bit more process webhook. You have your event data, and one of the more uh, I think useful ones that I found is reports and customers. We've had people ask us about uh, different reports or customizing reports or holding on to reports a lot longer um, or being able to export them. And uh, our system, you know, we're, we're basically limited to kind of what, what they decide to put in here. But if you wanted to make your own reports from our data, this would be the, the probably the best place to do that. Uh, there is pretty much, I'd say about 90% of the things you can do with our platform, you can do with our with our API. And that will soon include, I think here recently will also include Unify. Uh, but a lot of this stuff that's in here can all be queried um, through the API. So I want to show you guys at least how to set up some basic uh, stuff here. So if we go under API and we agree to the policy and we do our show, our API key, we're going to copy that and I want to show you how to experiment with Swagger Hub. So if we go under functions, we scroll all the way to the top. The first thing we need to do is authenticate uh, with Swagger Hub with the API key that we just generated. And that does API key doesn't change um, unless you regenerate it. Uh, so if you create one and then you write some scripts or you use it for a program, um, you don't have to worry about it expiring. At least I've never seen it expire. So let's pop in. It's asking for a couple of things. It's asking for our API key and then our ID token. Uh, you don't need the ID token. We just need the API key. So we're going to authorize that. So once you've authorized it, it's in here. You don't have to do anything else. You can close this. And then any of these Git items are basically, if you ever worked with an API, your Git is when you're pulling data um, out of our system. Post is when you're sending it to our system. And obviously delete is when you're deleting it. And then there's another one, I think it's called patch, which I believe is just kind of like you're updating existing fields. Uh, I think the Git are more interesting, actually Git data. Uh, so let's see, um, let's get a list of our customers. So if we click get here, we have a button called try it out. We click on that and there's not really any parameters to send with this one. So we're just going to execute it. And if we've done it the right way, we'll get a list in this first window here of all of our customers and all of the data. If you've ever worked with PowerShell, uh, you can create a PowerShell script that pulls all this into an array or Python or whatever program you're using. If you're using Power BI, it works fine. Uh, Grafana too. Uh, and you can basically do stuff from that data. Um, if you have questions on how to integrate with those, uh, the most of them will be answered here. This will give you the URL that it's talking to and how it's communicating our API key to um, the system. And it's done through headers. So if, you, if you're if you working with Power BI, there's an option for headers. And it's basically the API key is your variable. And then you got your key, which is right there. Any questions so far? My put anybody to sleep. <laughs> um, the, the event data is probably what's um, most important to a lot of you. Uh, and that's pulling the events from our system, including all of the details and everything uh, from our system to uh, either a third party, or we've also been asked, hey, can I keep it longer than a year? Uh, and, and with this, you could, you can also export the data with a report, but with the reports, you're limited to, to the amount of data that you're going to get. You're not going to get IP address threat intel. You're not going to get all the juicy details that go along with that. Whereas uh, with these events, you are going to get that. Uh, but, and this is a great example of ones that have parameters. So if I hit try it out, it's now asking me, Okay, what's your customer ID? What email address do you want to do? Uh, what's the priority of the event? What's your date range? Uh, as you know, the low priority events, they're very loud and can cause you to have way too much data. And our system can easily pipe out like five, six, 700 events at a time, not a problem. 
But when you start going over that and you're going into the thousands, um, it can appear to kind of hang, but it's just that it's getting all this information is just trying to give it to you. So it's obviously good, better to do it in small chunks. Uh, if you don't care about low priority events, I would not even include them because they are very loud, but totally up to you. Uh, you don't have to include any of this in here. So if I said, I don't care about the username, I don't care what kind of event you're sending me. I want to get all of them. Um, and I want to specify a date range of the last century. Okay. I'm just going to change that. You could execute this and it would give you everything for this day. I don't know. I think it does time too, but I don't know. I'm not sure how the strings formatted there. Uh, let's see. For this one, I'm going to, since I obviously, well, I don't know. Let me see if I can blow up our system. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. If anybody could do it then. But I think it limits you to, um, there's a, a size limitation here. And I believe it limits you to around, I think it's like 300. But if you specify this larger, it will obviously go larger, except there's more time for it to potentially hang. Uh, but the size kind of threw me off because I'm like, I'm thinking, oh, I'm thinking like kilobytes, megabytes, whatever. Uh, but this is size is the number of records. So just really weirdly labeled. Uh, but if you um if you, sc if you scroll down here, you can see the events on how they you know they've started to go into my system. They're in JSON format, uh, and so they're pulling off. Okay, here's the name of the person. Here's all of the um, all the event data. I'm seeing you know what product it was. I'm seeing the location, the IP address, any sort of of detail that's coming along with that event. Um, so that can be really helpful. For people that do want to back it up, or if you have a, a sock that needs to be able to interface with us, um, they can pull it this way. They'll probably end up using webhooks, um, which means they don't have to query the system. But these are great for reports. Outstanding. Uh, um, if you do want to do webhooks, I don't, I don't want to blast you with too much information. But I do want to show you some stuff that I learned. Uh, Basically, it starts with you putting the URL for the webhook here um, and then establishing the, the uh, what is it? They call it subscription, I think is what it is, which I, I didn't think it was covered super well in our documentation. Um, there's the subscriptions tell us, you know, what to send your way. Uh, so when you first establish that URL here, and I don't know if this is a prerequisite or not, but someone else might need to fact check me. Uh, but I can get a list of all my subscriptions. Well, first, I need to make sure my API key is in there, and it's not. Uh, so here, I'm going to do a list of all my current subscriptions, and that's the, the information that I'm pulling. And I do it as a spinny spinnies. Here's the kind of the format that it'll be coming out if it's expected like here. This is what you'll probably end up seeing. But what we're seeing, we're seeing it as is null, nothing. So this means there's no subscriptions. But if I wanted to create a subscription uh, for one of my clients, maybe I only wanted to pull data into my webhooks for a specific organization, that's where you would uh, create those subscriptions. And that's where we're going to post it right here. And we do the try it out. The parameters, the basically it's it's parameters are listed this way, but you kind of see what it's asking for. It's looking for the URL of the webhook. So I'm going to put just webhook.com something. And then next it's asking me for my uh my what is this thing here? Um the product type, which is Microsoft. Uh, the event endpoint ID, which I believe would also be Microsoft. I think this is where I'm seeing this. Hang on one second. Yeah. All right. I'm not crazy. I'm only partially crazy. All right. And so this is asking you for your organization ID. And that is all listed in our platform. So these like random characters that are under each one of your organization, that is their ID. So if you're well, working in you've our been API. ignoring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all the all the stuff that's right here that you're like, oh, whatever. 
um, that's how our system sees your organization because uh, organization name can be very similar or identical. And so we assign a, an ID, which makes it very precise. And so from here, this is kind of where you customize those. And when you're done adding that, you execute it and that creates a, a subscription, assuming you've done it right. Uh, this one's fussing at me because I didn't use HTTPS. Okay, cool. You do have to add it first. Awesome. You have to add it first into the list. That's cool. That's awesome. I just wanted to make sure that we, it's, learned, uh, we learned something new. Yeah. Yeah. I was wondering because I was like, can I just create subscriptions without actually? Um, because this basically what this does when you add it here into these partner domains, it validates that the the webhook is actually a valid one that will respond to our system rather than you just putting Google and then blasting Google with a bunch of events and DDoSing them or, or DOSing them. <laughs> so <laughs> that's pretty cool. That's good to know. So I'm going to actually replace this. And you wonder why CAPTCHA makes you re-auth 10 times a day, Ben. I know. It doesn't Oops, like so I just okay accidentally hammered Google.com 500 times a second. I mean, I should be used to it by now. I should be on their, on their, on their good list. All right. So, and I know all the information is not correct, but uh, basically I'm now, I've created this subscription because this is the response I'm getting, which is good. No error messages. And if I come back up here and I do an execute for my current subscriptions, you'll see that I have one that is listed here. Uh, if you ever need to remove it, it references it by the, I believe the channel ID. Oh, let's see here. As you also, if you scroll down, there's also a, a delete. Yeah. So we jump into delete, we try it out. I would pump in the channel ID, which is basically a um, a random generation of characters that you can pretty much do whatever you want to with, as long as it doesn't conflict with another one that's in our system. So that's if you end up running into an error message, that's probably why. But if you just randomly generate characters, it should be fine. Um, and all this stuff doesn't have to be done within Swagger Hub. You can do it through PowerShell. You can do it through Python. You can do it you know, if you wrote a program or something. Um, like I said, most of our uh, front end here is just a, a connection to our API system. So if we can do it, you can do it, right? <laughs> uh, cool, cool. Uh, let's see. <laughs> nice. Um, cool, cool. Um, and all this is recorded too, I believe. So if you guys need to reference back to it, feel free. Uh, like I said, support's probably not going to help you out too much if you come to them with with this. Uh, but they will they will definitely at least you know try to get you a good answer. Um, if it's something precise, if you're if you ask them, hey, how to write a PowerShell script that pulls your API, they're probably going to not uh, do that. <laughs> uh, so. Okay, so Sam says I've had, uh... okay. You know, I think we all, anybody yeah. here, um, I see a couple of new names, but if you didn't know, yeah, we capture all of these and they're posted to YouTube usually same day or next day. So if you need to go back and uh, figure <laughs> out what was Ben talking about, no, then nobody there's that. that. Too, <laughs> you don't know what you want to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, you know, feel free to experiment with, with these. Uh, like I said, you're, the gits are safe. Um, you can make changes to our our, our platform, and uh, there's there's a bunch of, of there's even uh, Respond has a, a, an API as well that you can uh, pull the pull the rules, create rules, um, configure them. Uh, so that's that's been pretty cool too. Uh, there's also I believe there's a way to update whitelists. So I think we're working with um, I think one of our partners is. Uh, working on a form, I think, with Power Automate uh, to be able to update that whitelist in our system when someone goes on vacation. I was like, that's freaking cool. I think that would be awesome. Uh, Roost, I think, is doing something similar too, but it's also the API. So yeah, there's nothing stopping yeah, you guys I, from doing that. I, I think Chip once said, there is pretty much nothing you can't do in the API um, after the partners are loaded, after the clients are loaded. Yeah, <laughs> There's that. The only Everything thing you can do in the GUI. 
Yeah, the only thing it's but, been limiting is is Unify has not been a part of the API, but that I believe is the most recent addition to this API. I don't think it's listed here, but I think it is in our system. Uh, and Fortify is not in there quite yet, but I know that they're looking yeah. at uh, doing that, um, which is really cool. One of our partners had an idea of, of making a form that someone would fill out and based on the responses would take different actions and Fortify. I was like, that's genius too. But a lift but there's there's a ton of automation that can happen and once it's built there's just super powerful stuff in here and again as ben said uh, we've seen some partners starting to leverage third parties like msp bots and, and roost to connect into other systems and either enrich things on our side or enrich things on their side or trader actions yeah true that's it i, I know unify is in there somewhere but i don't know i don't think we have a a link to it yet might want to ask adam about that yeah i, I know that's uh, definitely on, on the pipe i know he's going to want to overhaul a bunch of stuff i think before he started publishing it there because it's going to be some fairly major changes mm -hmm. um ben if you'd be so kind I, any anybody have any questions about any of the stuff that ben's talking about here the puts the gets the pulls the pushes <laughs> he's those <laughs> um then, Ben, do me a favor. Uh, jump back to our platform, the SAS Alerts tab, please. Mm -hmm. One thing I wanted to point out under organizations, that's some, or some of that data that we've been ignoring the whole time. We never, you guys have never needed to know that. But as Ben correctly said, if you're troubleshooting something and talking to support, often mm -hmm. that can accelerate their answer because then if you say i'm working with you know google workspace alerts and then you mistype mm -hmm. it and it's very similar to some other name then they're going to go down a rabbit hole but if you tell them is q l e whatever 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 you know copy and paste that into your support ticket then there's no question and it's like yeah. again if you have similar as ben mentioned you have similar similarly named um clients or um Sometimes multiple locations for the same mm -hmm. client uh, that have their own instance uh, that could really help our support guys uh, drill that down. So, yeah. more you know. <laughs> yep. And if there's ever any sort of reference to the um, uh, to the API that you're working with, it's asking you for your partner ID. It's right here too. That's a specific ID assigned to your tenant. Um. So yeah, that's you guys. It may ask you for Even that. If you rename yourselves or whatever. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you can call yourself. We have you visibility on our side. Yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we've uh, we, we've talked about uh, our compartmentalization and what um, even our support guys what they can see and what they can't see. Um, it's very much obfuscated, but once we have that partner ID, then we can begin to drill down from there. And so we do have that um, as our baseline visibility. So uh, yeah, if you ever guys ever have any questions, or if they're you're in the middle of an acquisition of somebody else that um, is using uh, SAS alerts, that's really the baseline information we need. Because believe it or not, some of you guys have very similar company names. <laughs> <laughs> I literally had this week. I had four different clients that are in the onboarding process, and they all have variations on the exact same name. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, when it rains, it pours. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Some names too but there might be two enriquez a couple of logans <laughs> there's a, there's only one ben sorry I, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I couldn't was, be I, only one i was literally i was on a call <laughs> yesterday with two simons from the same company yeah I, the uh the record has been four ryan's on one call and that was <laughs> that was maddening awesome. yeah oh so. man Ben, thank you for that uh, deep dive into that. I know that's a kind of a heavy lift for some people, but I hope it's uh there we are, Mr. Carter. Yeah, three yeah, of you guys. Um, I, I know that uh, can be a little bit of a heavy lift. Uh, it requires an investment of time, but the insight that you can get is it doesn't get any more precise. It's exactly what you want out of the platform. And it's your data. It's all there. Go get it, man. <laughs> You're number one on a number of lists, Mr. Carter. Yes, I am. <laughs> um, guys, uh, that was a uh, pretty interesting 45 minutes. Before we close out today, anything else top of mind? Any uh, questions? Well, don't ask Ben for bad jokes. Uh, anything else that uh, we can talk about? Or any API questions? As always, questions? <laughs> any API questions, yeah. Right. right on.
guys, thanks for the time and uh, bundle up, stay safe and uh, enjoy this fall weather. We'll talk again again in a couple of weeks. Great seeing you guys. Stay safe. Not too well. See you guys.